Okay, here's warm up 9.2.2. I'm going to solve for x and y use, using a special triangular relationship. So this is a 30, 60, 90. This missing angle would have to be 60 degrees. Okay, so um, here I've got my short leg. I'm just going to put SL for short leg. This would be the long leg, and then the y, the side where the y is, would be the hypotenuse. Okay, so the piece I have is the long leg. So I, when I don't have the short leg, I want to get it as quickly as I can. So um, I'm going to go from the long leg to the short leg. Well, hey, it's going to be getting smaller, so I'm going to be dividing by something, not multiplying, because it's getting smaller. All right, and then um, what we're going to divide by here is the square root of 3. So x is going to equal 20 divided by the square root of 3. Uh, okay, so you could write it like that, but we want to put it in simple radical form by rationalizing the denominator. So that's going to come out to 20 root 3 over 3. Okay, and that's what x is. So here, I'll put that up here. 20 root 3 all over 3. Okay, so there's my short leg. All right, once you have the short leg, we can get the hypotenuse. It's going to be getting bigger. The hypotenuse is the biggest piece. And we're just doubling the short leg to get the hypotenuse. So 20 root 3 over 3 doubled would be 40 root 3 over 3. Not 40 root 3 over 6. Don't double the denominator. Just double the numerator because we're multiplying by 2 over 1, really, when we're doubling it. Okay. All right, next problem, we've got a 32 degree angle and we want to find a positive and neg negative angle that are coterminal with a 32 degree angle. So um, coterminal angles are going to look the same in standard position. Um, so a 32 angle degree angle might look something like this. Uh, well, if I put in both pieces, it would look something like this, right? It'd be, it'd be in this first quadrant. Um, but if we go around another 360 degrees, we'll get another angle that looks just the same. So that would be coterminal. And you can go around in the positive direction or in the negative direction. All right? So all I have to do to get other angles that are, are uh, coterminal is add or subtract multiples of 360. So um, I've got 32 degrees. If I want a positive angle, I could add 720 or any multiple of 360, but I'll just add 360 once. That's going to put me at 392 degrees. So there's a positive angle that's coterminal. If I want a negative one, well, I'm going to have to subtract from the 32 degrees to get into the negatives. And I'm just going to subtract um, one multiple of 360 here, which is going to put me at negative 328. Again, I could keep subtracting 360s to get other um, options that would work or keep adding 360s here. Um, okay. All right, so next up, let's uh, sketch um, this angle in standard position. So in standard position, the, um, the vertex is going to be at the origin, and then what's called the initial side is going to be on the x-axis pointed to the right like that. Okay, And then this kind of works like a clock. So this would be a zero degree angle, and then you know if I open it up like that, that would be a 90 degree angle, this would be 180 and so forth. And you can actually go past 360 like this. You couldn't do that in a triangle, but you can do this in standard position. You can also do negative angles if you go this direction. So this would be negative 90, okay? But we're going in the positive direction. So I'm going to be going around this way, and I want to show which way I'm going when I'm graphing these angles in standard position. So I'm going to be going around this way. That's the positive direction. If I were to stop there, that would be 360 degrees. I need to go farther, right? So every um, quarter turn is going to be another 90 degrees. So let's see what would happen if we just went around twice. Well, that would be 360 doubled, which is going to be 720. Well, that's too far, right? 720 degrees is too far. So, But I want to go 20 degrees less than, um, than two times around. Okay, so I've only got another 90 degrees to go to get to, this would be 720, but I want to go to 700, so I'm going to stop about 20 degrees shy of, um, of 720 degrees. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not measuring this out. This is just uh, making a sketch, getting this generally in the right position. But a 720, 700 degree angle would look something like that. In, um, it, it'd definitely be in this quadrant somewhere down there, right? If you wanted to get a protractor out, you could just measure a 20-degree angle there to get it exact. Okay. 
All right, um, and next we're going to do some calculator uh, evaluating. So I'm going to put in cosine of 49 degrees. Now the big thing here is that the first one, this is in degrees, part A, but these two are in radians because they don't have the little degree symbols after the angle. So you need to be very aware of what um, what mode your calculator is in. So I want to be in degree mode for the first one. I'm going to hit the mode button right up here and these graphing calculators it's near the top left um, but you have to look around um, if you got a different calculator. So I can see I'm in degree mode the third one down so I'm good to go there and I'm going to just type in the cosine of 49 degrees and I'm going to the nearest hundredth so this is about 0 0.66. Okay. Um, so, next one, I want to be in radian mode. So I'm going to go back to mode, and I'm going to choose radian here. I'll hit enter to highlight radian, and then I'm going to go to quit. So I'll hit second mode to quit to get back to my home screen. Okay. So now I can put in the sine of 3 pi over 7. So I'll hit sine, and then I'm going to put 3 times pi. Pi is right above this, uh, this exponent key, this, this caret key here, the arrow up key above... Uh, so it's second and that button above the division symbol. Okay, and then I'm going to divide by 7. And actually, I'm just remembering, my calculator might be a little confused by this because it might do, um, it, it might not know that the, that the 3 is, it might do 3 times pi over, which would be fine, 3 times pi, that should work fine. Um, but if you want to be extra careful, you can put extra um, parentheses whoops, around the 3 pi just to make sure your calculator knows what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. Here, let's do a little test. I'll do it without those extra parentheses. Um, 3 pi over 7. Yeah, I got it. my calculator was smart enough there. Okay, so sine of 3 pi over 7, and that's going to give me about 0 0.97. Okay. All right, cosecant. There's no cosecant button, so I have to know what cosecant is the reciprocal of, okay? And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so that means that this is going to be equivalent to 1 over sine of 7 pi over 8, just because those are reciprocals, okay? So uh, maybe I'll do sine of 7 pi over 8 first on my calculator. I want to be in radian mode, which I still am because I just put my calculator in that mode. But I'm doing sine of 7 pi over 8. Okay, that's the denominator, right? So this is about 1 over 0 0.38. But then I still want to divide. And I, I want to use this whole decimal. So I'll do 1 divided by, and since I don't feel like typing in that whole decimal, I'm going to use the last answer. So I'm going to hit second and then this little negative button here because it says ANS. Then it's just going to use that last decimal. Okay, and I got about 2.61. Try to avoid rounding as you go through these problems. If I had rounded that to say 0.4, 1 over 0.4, I would have, my answer would not be great because um, I rounded too much as I went and it would throw off my final answer. Just to show you, if it had 1 divided by 0.4, it's okay, it says 2.5, but it is kind of a big difference between 2.61 and 2.5. So use as much as the decimal as you can. If you don't have one of those answer buttons, just type in as much of that decimal as you can. You don't necessarily have to go all the way down, but go five or six uh, places. Why not if you got them right there, and then you get a pretty good answer. Okay, that's it for the warm-up today, and I'll see you next time.